I built and shipped this Sprint Retro tool in Phoenix Live View, complete with real-time updates and database persistence in just a few minutes. And the best part is, you can do the same without leaving your browser. Code is available with a link in the description. And I'm proud to say that this video is sponsored by Fly.io, a great place to ship Phoenix apps. I think building real projects is the best way to learn a skill. But one of the most common questions people have about Elixir and Phoenix is where they can find example apps. The other question is whether AI is any good at it. Phoenix New can solve both of these problems and turn your idea into a deployed app, and it does it pretty quickly. When you first load up the tool, there's a chat to the left and a VS Code editor to the right. This is your workstation. Customize it, install extensions, make it your own. But we're here to build a project. And it all starts with a prompt. Every interaction with Phoenix New includes suggestions for next steps, but I'm not making another to-do list app. Instead, let's build a tool to facilitate retrospective meetings for a development team. I've written down my instructions here and let's see what it does with it. So first it's making a plan, trying to figure out what those steps will be in order to create it. And every time it's going to verify, is this what you want to do? Do you want to modify it? Are you ready to go? We'll proceed with these steps. And it'll ask some clarifying questions like, what design do we want this to have? And I'll go with a clean and minimal feel. And now it's starting with step number one. Now in its own isolated VM with root shell access, Phoenix New is creating a new project. On its own, it just switched into that context and now it has a dev server running. It also has an embedded browser that we can drag around, maximize and uh, minimize to show the app as it's being built. While it's working on the project, it will open the files in the editor. And since it's running in its own container, I don't have to worry about it running a command that does something bad to my local environment. It also means that I'm not stopped every few seconds to authorize a command. I can just let it cook. Looking at the preview browser, I can see that the app has been built. And looking at the code that it's producing, I can tell that it knows how Phoenix apps are structured. Ecto migrations, context module functions, and if I go into this live view, it even connects to PubSub. If you want to learn how to do this by hand, you might need to go through a series like Phoenix app from scratch. But with Phoenix New, you can accelerate your learning while getting something out there. You can take a look at a real project written with an awareness of how Phoenix is built and start asking questions about it or exploring that code base. Now I'm going to take this app for a test drive. So I'm going to open up the app in a new tab and start a new retro. When I click create retro, it looks like there's an error. So over in Phoenix New, I'll click this little button, send logs. This sends log messages over to the agent and it should be able to figure out what's going on and debug it for us. It's also gonna use a web browser to do some testing to make sure that it actually works. So now if I go into the retro board preview, hello world, create retro, it created a new retro and gave us a little share code. We can set our name, and start providing some feedback. Let's continue building this app, add feedback, and now it's here attributed to me. If I open up the same URL over in this preview browser, I'll see continue building this app. And since this is another browser, I can be someone else. And maybe I'll say that we need to start doing real-time updates. And if I check it over here, it looks like Phoenix PubSub sent that over to the browser without me needing to refresh. So we've been able to scaffold out this app and even debug a little issue and used a web browser to verify that everything works. Now this landing page leaves something to be desired. So let's ask for an update. But before I do that, I'll come in here and squash the chat history. This lets me save on tokens and keep the LLM focused on the task while remembering the purpose of this application. So it's gonna write a quick summary and we'll start from there. So let's ask for a landing page update to more clearly describe what the app is for. And we'll use three panels to indicate a value proposition. So I'll head over to the homepage of this where we're gonna be doing updates and 
Well, let's see what it does. And I love that I can adjust this little window and make it whatever size I want. So I can still see the code being generated while having that browser preview open. Now this tool is not perfect. It actually just updated the static home page that it had already replaced, but I gave it a nudge and said that wasn't the page that we mount at root. It was able to look at the history and look at the routes and figure out that we actually serve the retro live view on our home page. And now it's been able to do the update we were looking for, and I can see it over here in the browser as well. Now, unlike local first tools, this URL can be made public. So there's no more having to figure out how to get from local host to something that you can actually show to your friends. Now this is looking pretty great, but it's still running in a development environment and I wanna ship it for real. So with the button at the top right, I click to deploy and now the agent is working on setting this up with Fly. It's gonna figure out all the release configuration and in a few moments, the app should be live outside of this development environment and available to the world. And here we go, running Fly Deploy. All right, it says that the app has been deployed and I should be able to open it up. So now if I hit up this URL, well, there it is, it's retro board. And I can write test, start a new retro, and submit my feedback. And if I refresh the page, my feedback is still there because it's persisted in the database. So just like that, I have an app that I can share with people. Now I can add more features, redeploy, and even eject from this environment. With all this remote development, you might be wondering, what if I want this code locally or plan to collaborate with others? Well, Phoenix New also acts as a Git server and lets you pull down the code to your own machine. So use it to get to a prototype quickly and then you can pull the code down, push it to GitHub, whatever you want. It's your code after all. This also means that you can iterate on existing Phoenix projects by pushing them into this workspace, adding a new feature or doing some refactoring that requires the agent to fully understand Phoenix. Now it looks like it might have some ideas for some new features. Let's see what it has in mind. Let's add some real-time reactions. And let's build it. And I can give some thumbs up and some hearts. Now, if I wanna ship the update, I just have to hit deploy. I've been impressed with Phoenix New as a prototyping tool, and I imagine you will be too. Thanks again to fly.io for making this video possible. Check them out with a link in the description, along with a code for this retro tool. This has been Code and Stuff. Thanks for watching.